Jacobs Memorial trolley going past there. The David Jacobs drinks trolley has also come to Greatest Hits Radio, and that's an amazing thing. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. What, what have we grabbed from the trolley as it went past? Um, I've grabbed a nice bottle of orange wine, um, so slightly different uh, today, but it's from Italy, and it's called Evelyn, and it uses the Verdicchio grapes, and it's very, very delicious. So Is I it actually orange? It's actually orange, yeah. It's not made from, but it's contact. not made from oranges. Not made from oranges. No, it's made from Verdicchio grapes. As you, as you just that said, is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. I'm concentrating on the confession. Yeah, of course. Of so course. today's uh, today's confession comes from Laura. Thank you very much, Laura, for this. Simon, Matt, Susie, and the Confessional Collective. My confession goes back 500 million years. Wow. Give or take a couple Ooh. of million, but more of that later. Back in the 1990s, a group of us used to go away every year for the early May bank holiday and rent accommodation somewhere in the southwest of the UK. The common bond was that all the guys had played rugby together, so it was always a full-on time, with little opportunity for sleeping, quiet contemplation, or keeping up to date with the archers. Though quite why anyone would want to do that, I don't know. I fear that if they had come across your drinks trolley, then another confession might have been oh, needed. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good, though. Entertainments included the game of Jugopoly, which is a variant of Monopoly, where rent was paid in drinks, not to the banker, okay. but the landlord. Karaoke, with very little application of pitch, tone, or indeed ability to follow the words. And the favourite every year, the day trip out to a surprise destination. This particular year, it was the turn of my then partner, now husband, and I, to organise the year's annual event, and we chose the beautiful Dorset town of Swanage, renting two cottages either side of an old alleyway. An enjoyable time was had by all, and I'm sure that many apologies are due for many things, including drinking all the gin on the Swanage Steam Railway, <laughs> such that the train's departure from Corfe Castle had to be delayed whilst the guard popped off to the local supermarket for more supplies for our return trip. But I digress. I have to say, I feel sorry for the conductor, yes. whose job is yeah. not to keep you... If you've drunk all the gin, well, there's no more gin. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Anyway. It's sold out. So, where are we? Oh, yes. If, uh, eventually, the big day came uh, along, and there was a buzz of anticipation at breakfast. What had we organised? Where would we take everyone? How many pubs were nearby? Eventually, we set off, arriving at our destination on Kimmeridge Beach on the Jurassic Coast. We all marched... Onto the beach, and I have to say, not everyone in the party seemed as enthusiastic as we were. Some even thought that the activity might involve skinny dipping in the freezing sea. Back off, rugby players. <laughs> Little did they know what excitement was in store. Then the big reveal. We were all going fossil hunting. Ah. And to make it even more enjoyable, we had hired the services of a local fossil expert who arrived and handed everyone a small hammer to go about their searches. <laughs> right. Unfortunately, I cannot remember the gentleman's name, so let's just call him Jurassic John or JJ to his friends. So JJ was brilliant, full of enthusiasm, skipping from one oversized rugby player to the next, helping with fossil identification and suggesting where to apply the best hammer blows. We breathed a sigh of relief. The group were enjoying it and there was no threat of having to attend the notorious kangaroo court for a failed day out. This was a success and as the light started to fade we returned our hammers to JJ and not surprisingly made our way to the nearest pub to compare our finds and seek pain relief for all the misdirected hammer blows. Well, uh, this is the point where I am seeking forgiveness, Father Simon. Our group might have thought that I was late to join everyone in the pub as I was saying goodbye to JJ. The reality of it was that I had secretly gone in a local fo fossil shop and purchased a very fine specimen fossil, an orthokeratite, if you're interested. Okay. Ortho Keratite. Could be orthoceratite, not sure. I covered it with a bit of fresh mud to make it look as if I'd <laughs> yeah, just course. picked it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. became my find for yeah. the day. Everyone was amazed. Their broken bits of ammonite and bits of stone that were obviously not fossils simply could not compare. I was the hero for the next 20 years. When people came to visit our house, they would see my orthoceratite or orthokeratite <laughs> yeah, yeah, proudly yeah. displayed and we would talk about the great fossil hunting day. 
Father Simon. I seek some forgiveness from my friends for the deception and gloating. But in my mitigation, if they had simply turned the fossil over, they would have seen the price label <laughs> under the newly applied mud. My real plea for forgiveness yeah. is from the fossil who I completely misrepresented. The poor creature had not lived in Dorset, but Morocco. It was in a bed of granite, not the limestone of Kimmeridge. It was from the Devonian period, not the Jurassic. For such a, a series of deceits, I am hoping that dear orthoceratite keratite <laughs> still on display in my dining room will forgive me. Which is interesting, asking a fossil's uh, forgiveness. That hasn't yeah. happened before. But uh, uh, an excellent confession. I like that very much. Let's check in with Sister Susie, first of all. Well, Laura, I, um, I, I, I like that you've you know, paid a lot of attention in going to the pubs and drinking all the gin. And, and, and as a landlady, I very much appreciate that. However, I do think you could at least take in the label off the fossil. Like, that's not, not really much commitment there, is it? Um, so, and I, I do think, you know, I, I don't know if you'll get forgiveness from the fossil, but, you know, from your mates, I just don't think you should have, you just shouldn't have done it really, should you? You should have just admitted that you also just found a stone that wasn't a fossil, but you had a good day anyway, and that's fine. I think the fact that the, the fossil was completely misrepresented, I think the fossil is going to be pretty stony-faced. Oh, you? very good. Uh, anyway, brother... Well, I mean, uh, I mean, it's made it this far, hasn't it? It made it 500 million years. I'm sure it can deal with uh, being misrepresented by by Laura. And, and also, she left the, left the label on. It was almost as if she wanted to get caught. That would be my, <laughs> that'd be my feeling there. And also, I, I think the, 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 the people asking for forgiveness should be the fossil store. What on earth? They're on the Jurassic Coast. What are they doing selling fossils from Morocco? Should be on the Jurassic Coast. They're all there. It's called the Jurassic Coast after your park. So for well, you, that you reason... The, the British should only sell British fossils. Yeah, they're only selling <laughs> Jurassic um, fossils on the coast. All right. uh, for that reason, I choose to forgive. Okay, so...